Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another episode of the Hell Money Podcast. I'm your host, Casey Rotomore. I'm here with, uh, as usual, your lovely co-host, Aaron, boop, and Raph, boop, <laughs> and ordinarily, boop. Uh, we're at an undisclosed location somewhere deep in the heart of the Matrix. Uh, yeah, that's, uh, you know, welcome to the pod. We're locked deep in the Matrix somewhere. We're in a pod eating the bugs. Yeah. But here we get to be in a beautiful VIP booth at a nightclub while other people do stuff to set up for the night. And we just sit here and podcast because that's what we're good for. That's what we're good for. <laughs> uh, Raf, this is your second appearance on the podcast. Is that that's correct? True? That is true. Yeah. The wow. first one uh, was in Singapore. and But I think this is way cooler. We now have or you guys now have a costume budget. So uh, that's right. Thank you to the Hell Money uh, podcast Patreons, Patreon members. Uh, we could not do this without your kind support. We got a new camera, I think, as of like, you know, two episodes ago. So video quality should be better. Yeah, we got a new camera. We got costumes for everyone. Yep. Mm -hmm. um, and we also got these fancy black mic heads for our SM58 mic mics. Should probably not do ASMR live on the pod, but. Beautiful. Yeah, and then we also have Ordinally on the podcast yep. for the first time. Mysterious behind the scenes kind of guy. <laughs> kind of half doxing. Honored to be here. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Kind of half doxing. Yeah. 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 yeah I mean, I fine. guess you sort of half doxed in Amsterdam. Yes. On stage where you, you wore the. I had um, my caviar hat, right? The it cocaine was. and caviar. Cocaine <laughs> and caviar. <laughs> Legendary. I forgot that, unfortunately, in the Matrix. But <laughs> right, right, it's fine. right. Now yeah. I have my. It didn't have it in the loadout screen. <laughs> yeah. Why are we all here? Why did why are we all together? Oh, for the event, right? That's yeah. being set up. I'm like literally how did <laughs> oh, we end yeah, up here? It's just coincidence. <laughs> it's just coincidence. <laughs> well, because that's the thing is usually, you know, we're all around the world so we're not physically together. But I guess this group comprises several groups that are varying levels of entangled with each other. Mm, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, this is the board of directors for the Open Ordinals Institute. Yep, yep. I think legally we shouldn't even be allowed to all be in the same room together. That's right. Yeah, if we die, it's died, like the president and the it's... vice president being on the same plane. Yeah. All I the multi sig holders in one room. Yeah. People are usually, they're often confused about like, well, what is Ordinals? What is the Ordinals protocol? Like, is there like a company? Like, who's doing what? So we hope today to finally elucidate the mysterious holding structure of the various entities involved with uh, ordinals, which fortunately is actually very simple. So yeah. uh, I guess you just mentioned the Open Ordinals Institute. So that is a nonprofit. The four board members of the nonprofit are the four of us here. Uh, it does not do very much. It's not really, it, it's not involved at all with sort of guiding the protocol or making decisions. It is not a decision-making entity. Uh, all it does is that it funds uh, RAF's work on the protocol, not mine. I work for free and it pays for the servers. And we all sit on the board and we formed this thing when? August, August 2023. Mm. Yeah. Because I remember Ordinals, the like Ord Inscribe, like was launched on mainnet mm -hmm. on an Aquarius new moon. Mm -hmm. And then the OOI was formed on the Aquarius full moon mm -hmm. six months later in August. Yep. That's is, how is, I remember that. Is that a good omen? <laughs> it's just like, I mean, a new moon is a new beginning, right? So that was the new beginning. And then the full moon is like a culmination thing. So I think it's like, you know, that first thing and then it comes to kind of like, a, okay, this is sort of the form that this is gonna take. Mm -hmm. Um, I think also the, the founding went hand in hand with my promotion to lead maintainer. That's right. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> Made us look more professional to have a lead maintainer. Yeah. yeah it yeah. seems like we have a, have a team of engineers behind us. You know? Yeah. Everybody's very confused <laughs> when they find out that it's just me and Raf like behind the scenes. Like it turns out that like if you don't do something of like an insane Baroque complexity level you kind of only need a couple couple dudes like grinding in the background or yeah. one trans guy I, mean, I, I, yeah. I think we could you know we could be adding one or two additional kind of students or for sure yeah right? yeah so we'd like to it's... we'd like to find like another engineer or two to to work with us and we have some like contributors that do stuff here yeah. and then and like they're good contributors so yeah. like oh, we're always happy to look at those prs and kind yeah. of we're very patient but, but it's very high standards <laughs> we have on the, on the code base like there's a lot of testing involved yeah but uh yeah we also do the coding streams mm -hmm. yep. those are kind of also under the open ordinals kind of umbrella kind of we have a youtube channel the yep. open ordinals institute youtube channel 
where we kind of then stream on the Discord. Yep. Yeah, wait, okay. Actually, now getting into the nuances yeah. of the Venn diagram. Because yeah, yeah, now yeah, yeah, I'm yeah, starting yeah. to be like, hmm. Like, okay, Ordinal's Coding Club, yep. which exists on the Ordicord, yep. the Discord. I, I think okay. I'm the admin. I'm the owner of You're the Ordicord. Ordicord. Yeah, I, I feel like the there's Ordicord. kind of like, there's stuff that's actually kind of just yours. Yeah, a lot Ordinals. of... Ordinals.com. Yeah, so uh, Ordinal, Ordinals.com I bought when I started the... when I sort of came up with the name ordinals which was in i think like early mid 2022 i believe mm -hmm. um i got it it was not it was not a uh, like a new registration somebody else had registered it but they were selling it for the low low price of i think two thousand dollars wow um probably the best purchase That's... i ever made wow <laughs> yeah That's super really good yeah, yeah yeah and then at the same time i also bought bought ordinals.net and ordinals.org and those were both uh, new registrations. So those I paid, oh. you know, the $20 registration fee. Um, ordinals.org is on loan to the Open Ordinals Institute, where you can go to ordinals.org and you can go to the donation page and you can donate some sats uh, to fund rats, rafts, uh, raf <laughs> rafts, rafts. <laughs> right, we're in New York, so rats uh, work. Rats are on the rats. mind. Is on that rat over there? <laughs> <laughs> it is, I think. Look, there's, a, there. there's a rat in the subway tracks dragging its walls through the, through the water. <laughs> um, so yeah, there's ordinals.com, ordinals.net, ordinals.org. Those are actually just all owned by me. Um, Ordinals.net on loan or ordinals.org on loan to the Open Ordinals Institute. Then ordinals.com, that is the um, domain where we run the main instance of Ord, or not the main instance, but sort of the public facing instance that everybody can use to explore the blockchain. That thing that you are talking to when you go to ordinals.com, that is Ord. That is software that you can run on your computer. If you run that, it will look exactly like ordinals.com. It's all open source. Um, Do you use ordinals.net? No, ordinals.net I don't use anything for. What is like well, .net canonically used for? God, I don't remember. So like originally com was for commercial organizations. Yeah, because ordinals.com isn't like even quite the right fit for what it's used for. Honestly, right? ordinals.net would make more sense. Yeah. Um, net, I guess. I don't know if it's for general internet things. I don't know what the original idea behind the domain name was. Um, but I just got it to just fill out the the portfolio. I mean, we use Ordinals.net for our actual servers. Like the actual servers are running on these domains. Oh yeah, that's and true. And then we have a load balancer in front of Ordinals.com that yeah. like disperses it to three or four servers in the background. Yep, that's right. Yeah, yeah. And then like, what are other things that are like owned by me? I guess the GitHub, like the Ordinals GitHub. I think I'm the owner of that. I think Raf has admin access. Mm -hmm. I don't know if he has the power to kick me off of the. I don't think so. Yeah, yeah. So, but I, was... I am an owner of the crate on Rust on crates that a I co owner. Own. A co owner. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So then, <laughs> so then there's like the GitHub and the GitHub. Yeah, so the GitHub is not really owned by. It's it's owned by me, I guess, and that's sort of managed by me and Raf. Raf sort of on behalf of the Open Ordinals Institute mm -hmm. or as funded it. by the Open Ordinals yeah. Institute. And then uh, there's the crate, the Ord and Ordinals crate. Ord is the uh, daemon, like the 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 server and wallet and everything. And that is a Rust crate. And so I think me and Raf are co-owners of that. And then there's the Ordinals library crate, which is also me and Raf are co-owners co of that. Uh, and then there's Inscribing Atlantis. Well, I was going to say there's the oh, the Ordicord and the Ordinals Coding Club. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Those right? are, yeah, I mean, yeah. but that's kind of the, you still, right? The, the Ordicord is his, but I think the YouTube channel is more open on his. I think, I think Charlie yeah. created. Did Charlie create yeah, the YouTube maybe, channel? Yeah, maybe honestly, Charlie <laughs> might control all of it. Yeah. Yeah, he like, controls, but I created it, and then I gave him access. Okay, yeah. Yeah, you're, I think that's, see, yeah, we're, yeah. we're getting into all the various entanglements <laughs> here. But, I mean, so there's all these kind of, like, nebulous parts that are, like... I don't know. I mean, benevolent dictator status to like kind of like community funded to mm -hmm. whatever, yep. you know, like it's it's all kind of all over the spectrum. But then how are you involved? I'm involved in various ways. So uh, <laughs> <laughs> this is going to be a lame ass podcast if you're just caging the internet. There is like business the matters answer. and concerns. So Puppet different master. ownerships. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I don't know. I mean, my original kind of involvement was with, uh, you know, contributing a little bit to the uh, open source code base. Mm -hmm. 
this is important like speed up to the index very oh, yeah. yeah that was critical fun. Like, speed up to the indexer and it's still something i would like to get back into because it's like it's you know that that's kind of what originally drew me to to this work like mm -hmm. the indexing the bitcoin blockchain kind of really kind of looking at transactions with this special lens and trying to make that very efficient so that's that's you know kind of what originally drew me to it and mm -hmm. then um now I'm mainly involved with the Open Ordinals Institute, so um, I don't know which role do I have. I'm the treasurer. Treasurer, treasurer yeah. yeah. So maybe we do the role. You're the adult yeah. in the room. <laughs> I'm the adult in the room. I'm, I'm, I'm trying. He's the president. I'm the secretary, and he's the chairman. Yeah. yeah. Is that right? I think, right. That's, yeah. I think that's right. This is yeah. news I mean, to me. Yeah. <laughs> These are just like the legally mandated yeah, 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 roles yeah, yeah, yeah. that you like have that's to the have. minimum. Yeah. I think it's because like the three roles, like treasurer, president, secretary, were necessary, and then you have to have someone on the board who's not those three people be the chairmen. So then mm. I was like, okay, okay, by default. <laughs> I mean, it's you know, it's, so, it's a think. natural role. Yeah. It fits. Yeah, yeah, I think it's good. It's ceremonial. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> and I, yeah, there's we don't the Open Source Institute really doesn't do much. I mean, we no. take no. money and we pay RAF and we pay for the servers too. Yeah. Uh, two of our servers are in Germany. Uh, one in Germany, two in Ukraine. In I think Kiev. only one in Ukraine. Maybe only one. I yeah. get very nervous about the lump sums of Bitcoin being sent <laughs> yeah, to Ukraine. Yeah, it looks pretty sketchy. <laughs> like we're just yellowing <laughs> Bitcoin every servers. month to some like random Ukrainian, you know, service provider. Hostico, we actually like them a lot. Hostico <laughs> has done a great job of yeah. hosting all, our servers. I, I think it's all pretty transparent. Yeah, yeah, yeah for sure. I don't yeah. disagree. Yeah. Yeah. Is it transparent? Do we publish our the Open Open Institute like financials anywhere? I mean, you, well, see, you see the address, address and you can you see know? all the transactions. True. Yeah. So we're not. That's our version of transparency. It's on a public ledger. You can see the, the, the slush fund moving around the blockchain. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. I mean, like literally, yeah, that was something that I liked about Bitcoin was like that level of transparency that you can have if you mm -hmm. want, you know, like the address yeah. that we receive donations through is on ordinals.com org slash donate. Yep. And you can see when we pay RAF or when we pay for servers. It's like, I mean, yeah, it's all there. Yep. It's actually yeah. kind of nice when I was doing accounting. Like I was like, oh. This is there's this ledger. There's yeah, already, it's crazy. Yeah. We have a wow. ledger of transactions like this. It's verifiable. <laughs> Love that. And we have been on a Bitcoin standard for yep. I think that's pretty cool, year, actually. Which is nice. Yeah. 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 Everything nice. gets paid in Bitcoin. We yeah. specifically chose Hostico, our Ukrainian hosting provider, because they accept uh, Bitcoin for servers. I feel yeah, like I Host why. Hostico should sponsor the pod. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no. yeah. Come on, Hostico. That's a good idea. <laughs> Yeah, so I think right now um, Open Audits Institute doesn't do much yet. I think it's an important role mm -hmm. to, um, you know, sponsor the open source development. I think that role we can become larger. Um, I think there's more uh, that can be done. Um, but then this, the, the, the other way I'm involved in this Venn diagram is with uh, Raf and Aaron working on uh, inscribing Atlantis. Which um, I am not a part of. I am not part of inscribing Atlantis. I am a, I'm a programmer. I'm not good at business. <laughs> Uh, there was an abortive attempt to start a company at the beginning of the, this all taking off. It was called uh, Ordinals Corp or Ord Corp for short. Uh, it did not go well, unfortunately. <laughs> Ord Corp did not. It did not go well. So it is no more. It has been uh, dissolved, which I think is actually pretty good. Like, I think it's very nice that in reality, like everything's pretty clean. Like I just chill. I write code. Uh, the servers are paid for. And yeah. You're an artist, yeah, I'm you an know. Artist. I think like you enjoy your creative freedom. You maximize for freedom. Yeah, I just want to <laughs> chill and write code. And, yeah, yeah. You're also allergic to making money, as many people That's true. that yeah, yeah, like yeah. know it of requires... you in any way would, would <laughs> be able to plainly see. <laughs> making money requires, you know, making commitments about things you're going to do in the future. It involves a lot of hard, unpleasant work. Like I just want to flip the bits, you know. I just want to. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so that's why we started inscribing Atlantis to also do the hard and unpleasant work of uh, making money. Of making money. <laughs> no, no, no. Actually, it's a mission to you know, <laughs> yeah, further, okay, right, uh -huh. yeah, yeah, the yeah. culture of uh, yeah. of art. I actually, I think I said it well in the. I was we did the NFT NYC panel earlier today, and I think I had a pretty good business businessy kind of answer. Mm -hmm. Do you remember? Yeah, no, I don't want to. It was. I tell said. Us. Um, I said. Well, you know, like we like to keep the nonprofit simple, and like you know, we're not trying that's to overpromise, but you know, what we what we'd love to do is bring more artists into into ordinals and so it yeah. made sense to have a different which i think is true it's I mean, true i mean it's true i mean this was this now, was literally like, the literally discussion yeah. the discussion we had in the beginning right how can we organize events how can we bring 
the, the community and the people together in a way that doesn't lose us money, right? And it's hard to do in a nonprofit, I think. Yeah, it's just, um, I mean, it's so, I think that's been a big lesson, honestly, of having the nonprofit in the first place is like, okay, obviously it's great to have a nonprofit structure for receiving donations and paying people through donations. Like that is a no brainer, but to run everything through a nonprofit is like so annoying mm. everything that i've had to do that's not like i think there were only maybe two or three things that i had to pay for that weren't sort of like specifically like from the two categories of things that we pay which is raf and hourly rate and like mm. servers mm -hmm. it just is so much like you have to sign off on everything like you have to like get the board to approve and it's just it's just like a nightmare mm. so i mean it's a lot easier to have just like the freedom of a like llc corporation style organization and not like in my opinion just like muddy the waters of ooi like yep. i would rather ooi yeah. just stay pristine and then we do yep. whatever we want on the other side of things yeah and it's important for ooi not to go out and be endorsing yep. one thing or another you know and that's what i always tell people too like there's a lot of people i think who like part of why I think I think this conversation is interesting or maybe people will be interested in it is because I think there's a lot of confusion about like who is what and mm -hmm. what organization does what. I always have to tell people like, oh, I doesn't like collaborate with anyone. We mm -hmm. don't like sponsor anything. We're yep. not like working with anyone. We'd never endorse anything like that is just literally just the neutral open source protocol. But then Inscribing Atlantis has a lot more freedom to be like, oh, like we like this artist or we like this collection and we want to like, I mean, you know, I think like it takes the technical expertise of like RAF and Ordinally and it like, like those are the people that should be helping artists, right? Mm -hmm. Like those are the people that you ideally want to help you inscribe. It was so funny last night, actually, I was out and so many people were like, oh, like you work with Ordinally, like he helped me from day one to inscribe, <laughs> da, da, da. And I was like, Fucking ordinarily, always has his hands in everything. Like, like, yeah, I mean, I, I, you know, I think I, I think that's part of how the how, how the inscribing Atlantis also came together, right? Like, I there was such a demand from from when the protocol was launched for people to get help, right? They, mm, they yeah. you know, many artists recognized very early the potential, but the technology is, you know, it's like it's it's easy for us to use, but it's it's not easy for for an artist. It's to, not drag you know, and drop your. JPEG. It's not drag and yeah. drop your. Or, you know. Today you can drag and drop your JPEG, but like you know, if you want to do you know Cooler features. things that are a little more interesting, then and not then, you spend know, a million you, dollars on and fees. not spend a million yeah. dollar on mm -hmm. fees. Um, you 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 can you know you can do a lot more with some you know kind of like you know maybe a little bit of kind of custom coding or a little mm -hmm. bit of like you know like exploiting the whole feature set of uh, of, of what we built with art. So um, I, you know, and I think that's. Um, having a commercial context for that with inscribing Atlantis is I think like also very beneficial for the open source work like working with Raft like you know the next, uh, last few months on on you know inscribing specific collections and recognizing oh this is actually the user experience of yeah. what you mm. of what you of what you're doing when you're like you know inscribing hundreds of images on special sets and you know like all this stuff like benefits the open source protocol as well I think that's you know, so it's a it's a it's a virtuous kind of circle of um, yeah. you know uh, yeah. having these two things. Like the recent improvement to the wallet, where the wallet now talks to the server, which can continuously run in the background and stay up to date. That really happened because Raf was doing a lot of making a lot of inscriptions. This was like, oh my god, this is fucking horrible. <laughs> this needs to change. And so then yeah. he went and changed it, and it's much better. And now everybody benefits from that. Yeah, it was yeah. like kind of the the programmer's curse. Like you always yeah, program yeah. in this thing, but then you don't actually use it because yeah. you spend all your time like programming on it mm -hmm. um and then yeah exactly the wallet now now i've realized if you have a lot of utxos and a lot of inscriptions the wallet is slow again things go bad yeah so i'm fixing that at the moment mm -hmm. so like i'm it's le learning by doing basically mm -hmm. because you can test as much as you want but tests don't really capture the real world use cases yeah. like yeah. we have a lot of tests but like the real world use cases like you always have to actually like do it yep. so like yeah i've been really glad to like do stuff with inscribing atlantis and like practice actually inscribing through that yeah. yeah, I think it also was something that wasn't necessary, like, until really, like the Jubilee, I would say it wasn't really that possible for you to take on much more than just Ord. Like, I think, I mean, because Inscribing Atlantis, we did, so we did Inscribing Amsterdam in the fall. And that was like an event that wasn't, mm -hmm. you know, we did do a collection for that, but that wasn't really like, technical, like work on either mm -hmm. of your parts. Um, it was really just an event 
and a collection and we kind of were just seeing do we like this like what mm -hmm. do we take this can from we here? work together yeah i mean i think what that collection showed is that also like careful curation is is you know is an aspect that is that is very valuable so i think that's also something we're bringing together in inscribing atlantis not just the technical side but also like you know we have an art historian who's helping us with curation and you know cataloging and and you know kind of really bringing out the 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 art in a way that i think um really shows off the full potential so i think you know that's that's one thing we pioneered with the uh with the amsterdam blooms yeah that's what i mean is like i think that it was only really recently that the protocol was even kind of mm -hmm. done in the sense of mm -hmm. having all of the core features that an artist or a creator would be interested in yeah. and then i think like the transition to then being like okay well now the features are done but i mean how many people are using parent child for example when they inscribe not that many Yep. compared to how many could be yep. even something like that right where it's just you know that might not be something that's obvious to someone who's making a collection or especially if it's a big collection they don't know how necessarily um and so i feel like there's just features like that where you know you have a good idea of how those things work but you haven't actually practically used them or at least at that time you hadn't and now it's like the experience of actually using them and realizing the hurdles and also just yeah i think like it's it, the the ideal project that we take on with inscribing Atlantis is I think a project that like shows the protocol features. Uh, I always like when it applies to the digital megalith narrative of like, you know, something that's cataloging either an important part of culture or history or this moment in time or something. Cause I like the archeological idea of Bitcoin as being this like primary source document of our mm -hmm. digital era. So anything that's like that, I like, I feel like that fits as well. And then, yeah, artistically interesting, artistically kind of pushing things forward. I would, I would say those are kind of like the three things that, that we look for, but that's, you know, I think a lot of that is in the ethos of the core protocol. It just doesn't make sense to do that under a nonprofit, mm -hmm. you know, like it just, it's like, yeah, just having to work with the government is awful. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> many well, such cases. Many such cases. <laughs> And then other entities, I guess the how many the how many pod right the, the podcast the the uh, podcast. What's the word I'm looking for? Like multimedia a, empire. Multimedia empire. empire yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that and that's how many podcasts. That's me and Aaron. That's our thing. We mm -hmm. started it like almost two years ago at this point. Something like yeah, that. Yeah, almost two years ago. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Was I was I on the whole ordinals thing when when we met? Yes. Right, like for when we met. Like we before, just started. Just when when we first met at like Barry at Bitcoin mm -hmm. Meetup. I had I had already started ordinals. Yeah, but I don't know that you were calling them ordinal. I remember because didn't Mark Goodwin kind of come up with the ordinal theory? He, like, he came up with the term ordinal theory. Ordinal theory, not, yeah. Not ordinals. Yeah, yeah. So I think you were working on ordinals when I met you in January 2022, mm -hmm. or had just started. Yeah, but, but yeah. then I think like it was kind of the like May through August period that you were like really that mm -hmm. was all you talked about. Yeah. Um. And then we recorded the Ordinal Theory How Many Podcast episode, August 2022. Yep, yep. And that was when I feel like the Ordinal Theory aspect was fully fleshed out enough mm. for you to actually present about it in a quite deranged way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I yeah, think yeah. that was the episode I, I, I saw and then I decided I wanted to help Casey out. Nice. <laughs> yeah, because <laughs> like, then that you was, started working for Casey in Yeah, you, you built right? this very nice, uh, I don't know, sales funnel, you know? <laughs> I mean, your video had like, I don't know, maybe 10 views on YouTube. Oh my God, it gets lower every time you say that. <laughs> it used to be 100, then it was 50, now it's 10. <laughs> I was like, damn, these people are dropping so much alpha, I have to work with them. <laughs> I mean, it's true. We were recording the How Many podcast much more consistently than we record now we're yeah. recording one Once episode a week, a week yeah. for probably six to eight months yeah. straight yeah and the it would get 100 to 200 views yep like i think the ordinal theory episode got like 300 views yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah. go back and uh, give our earlier videos some 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 views some they're likes good. They're, good. They're, they're good they're really good <laughs> like, they're really good yeah like I, in particular the craft store bitcoin episodes yeah. are probably my yeah. nostalgic yeah. favorite which is like a very simple step-by-step -step walkthrough of how bitcoin works with visual aids from Michael's craft store. Like Cat Bro yeah. owns this. Cat, you, Anarcho Cat Bro. Anarcho, <laughs> Anarcho Cat Bro owns this, but you don't know which, you don't know who is Anarcho Cat Bro. Yeah. Mm. 
Yeah, no, th- those were my uh, episodes I was most skeptical about filming. Mm. I was like, these are going to be awful. I don't, <laughs> don't want to do this at all. And then they turned out great. Yeah. Isn't there also some unreleased episodes? <laughs> yeah, there <laughs> we'll are. We'll get into the unreleased, unreleased episodes. episodes. <laughs> They're too spicy for, um, for uh, you know, uh, yeah. If you can believe it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, okay, wait. So does that encompass all of the various entities I think and so. things yeah i think so okay so there's oi yep. there's kind of just like nebulous ordinals things that either you own or you kind of control but mm-hmm. hopefully you don't go like haywire and yep. you know betray yep. ordinals or yep. something you go to uh ordinals.com and it just redirects the cardano website or something <laughs> Ordinals, long term plan, right? Ordinals is now cardano yeah and i'm like going away with my suitcases of money to my private island oh runes though oh yeah right? runes. that's i feel like another venn diagram where it's like mm-hmm. how does runes fit into yeah, all of this or yeah, not yeah. you know yeah so runes is you know it's part of ord it's part of the main the implementation of runes is in the same code base as the implementation of ordinals and inscriptions um raf works on that code base and he does help with runes quite a bit um, but we decided that it would not be appropriate to take funds that had been given to the Open Ordinals Institute and use that to fund anything. Shit coining. Yeah, shit coining. Yeah, because, <laughs> okay, like you like inscriptions. Does that mean that you automatically like runes just because the same people are doing it? Like, no, they're very different. So, um, Raf, we... Um, just uh, begged the DGENs for some money on Twitter. We posted a uh, Bitcoin address and saying like, hey, Raf, I need help on runes. Um, send Bitcoin to this address. It will go yeah. directly to RAF to work on runes. The DGENs were very... Uh, there was overwhelming support. Like it was crazy how much the people sent. Yep. Um, so yeah, thank you like very much a, for that. Half of like, Bitcoin at this point? I think something around that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But m- more than half of Bitcoin, yep. yeah. So that's that's been enough to fund RAF's work on runes up until now, up through launch. And then I have a very talented, smart friend of mine who um, we paid to help us out with sort of like a review kind of audit kind of thing. That was probably the best money I spent so far. Yeah, like, yeah. And like the, the couple of thousand that I spent on like for his review, it was incredible. Like he's so smart. He like instantly got all the intricacies and all the edge cases of the protocol. Yep, yep. Showed us like crazy stuff that we were doing wrong or that mm-hmm. would like lead to like subtle errors in the long term. Yep. It was uh, yeah, amazing to like watch Yeah, work. he's he's the one who's really responsible for... We already had cenotaphs, but there are many more cases that now become cenotaphs. Can you explain what a cenotaph is? Absolutely, Aaron. I'm, glad, I'm so glad you asked. <laughs> a cenotaph is a uh, memorial monument or like grave for somebody whose re- remains are not there. So if somebody who was lost at sea or who died abroad or something like that, um, it's sort of it's an empty it's an empty tomb. Uh, So, okay, what is the whole idea behind runes and cenotaphs? The idea is that we want to be able to upgrade the runes protocol in the future with new features. Um, And in reality, there are actually very few features that we're thinking about adding. The protocol is fungible tokens are simple. Um, If um, if you don't do crazy things that that don't work, uh, they they don't need a whole lot of functionality. But we do want to add these things in the future. But we want to avoid the case where a old unupgraded client like a runes v1 client can't be tricked into seeing into thinking that it has runes that it does not right like maybe there would be a um, new feature that could change the way that runes transferred in a transaction and a new client uh, a v2 client would see the v2 client owner as owning the runes and the v1 client would see the same runes as belonging to the v1 owner and so we don't want that to happen. So the way that upgrades are handled is that a malformed runestone, which includes runestones that use you know new features, v2, v3, v4, v5 features, um, the effect of those those runestones, according to the old unupgraded clients, appear as cenotaphs. When a transaction appears with a cenotaph, all runes that are input to that transaction are burned. And so this prevents tricking old clients about the location of the these these runes because according to the old client those runes appear as being burned sounds scary casey does sound scary wait and so the the (laughs) idea behind the word cenotaph is that there's sort of like a a tombstone or a marker but the bodies i.e the actual runes are in an unknown location so that's why they're called the cenotaph what what were you gonna say Aaron? sounds scary casey it does i'm worried about burning all my runes (laughs) it does sound scary but you shouldn't worry about it uh, at all so um, 
you can it's it's very easy to determine whether or not a rune stone i.e a rune protocol message in a bitcoin transaction is a cenotaph you don't need to run an index to know whether a transaction is a cenotaph or not it um it is completely knowable without looking at the chain state and it's honestly it's very simple like just don't misencode your rune stone like it's it's Idiots. this is easy yeah and like when people are like, oh, this is so scary, like, what, why why would you do this? It's like, well, what what should the runes index do when it hits a malformed protocol message? Trying, cursed runes. Cursed runes, yeah, dude, don't. <laughs> Listen, negative negative names. That was ne the most stressful time of my life. Yeah, that, not was, again. that was bad, yeah. But so, like, the protocol is very, very simple. It is not hard to create a well-formed runestone. Um, you can use the library, the ordinals library crate to encode rune stones or to just use it as a sanity check. So you produce your own rune stones, you run it through this protocol and you find out, okay, does it, you know, was it correctly encoded? Um, yeah, so it's, it's not hard. And like, but honestly, I mean, like the infrastructure providers out there are terrible. They, 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 they test and prod. They don't test at all. We ask them things like, oh, Hey, you know, are you, you know, running your code on like reg test or something? They're like, no. We're testing it on mainnet. Like that's how we do it, which is mind bogglingly stupid to me. Um, so yeah, but it's in reality, it's not hard to avoid. A cenotaph doesn't happen by accident is what I'm but, saying. So, but, what, so what, what do we provide to help people avoid it? Uh, I mean, we provide a library, the ordinals library, the crate. So you can, that contains a, uh, decoding runestones from transactions or encoding runestones into a transaction. So yeah, it is not, uh, it's not hard to, uh, to do. Nice. Yep. Why did we get on this tangent? Oh, because you got the code review. So what was the no, code review? No, we were review? talking about runes. Yeah, no, I know, I know, but the code review of runes, then you brought up this. Oh yeah, right. So this, um, this friend of mine, he, um, sort of convinced us to tighten up a lot more edge cases, a lot more edge cases now that are sort of nonsensical things that you can do with rune stones are now cenotaphs. The other, the other reason that we have cenotaphs is because a protocol like runes, there is really no chain consensus, right? Like, um, you know, anybody can publish a rune stone to the blockchain. Um, and so it's, it's, it's definitely a challenge to keep indexers in sync. So cenotaphs provide a, you know, a stiff penalty for diverging from the spec. And so it's our hope that this will mean that um, people will be very careful about their runestone encoders and decoders. They will not litter the blockchain with a bunch of weird invalid transactions. And if they start making bad transactions, they will notice very quickly because they'll see the runes as being burned. They won't have some bizarre encoding that they use that happens to work that um, that does what they want. They'll see, okay, we're producing cenotaphs. We need to fix this. So it's also in the hopes to kind of guide everybody towards uh, non weird rune stones and all agreeing on the same the same state. But, but something maybe technical question. So something that is not a cenotaph now or that is a cenotaph now might become recognized in a future version right yep, that's right yep so what happens if something is in, is um on the blockchain now that is now recognized as a cenotaph and then at some point in the future as a future protocol becomes recognized yeah i mean this is this is possible that's, yeah it would just yeah. have new semantics and everything that that the only the things that cannot change are um which runes were etched Mm -hmm. and whether or not a rune was minted in a mm -hmm. transaction. So even in cenotaphs, if a cenotaph contains a mint, that mint happens, it, but those but minted runes are burned. Yep. Yeah. And uh, if a rune is etched in a cenotaph, the rune still exists. Nobody else can etch the same name, but the supply is set to zero and it is unmintable. So the supply of total supply of runes is just strictly increasing with newer versions. Like uh, yeah. Only go up. I mean, <laughs> hopefully we don't have a bunch of cenotaphs that suddenly pop, you know, billions of weird runes, <laughs> weird burned runes into existence. But yeah, yeah. Hypothetically speaking. Yeah. 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 Up only. Yeah. Up only inflationary yeah. market. Um, so why are, why is runestone right that's like the runestone is like the a, implementation no a runestone is a runes protocol message okay which is a you know the you, you have a transaction you have runes going to the inputs you want to specify how runes are going to the output as well as whether you're minting a rune and whether you're creating a new rune and so a runestone is a rune protocol message that encodes all of that in mm -hmm. a bitcoin op return 
And then runes is like ord. Runes is the protocol. Runes yeah. is like ordinals. So runes is like ord. Or runes is like, no, no. I mean, runes is like, runes are like inscriptions, right? There are different protocols that are on top of Bitcoin. Yeah. And they're both in ord, which is the reference implementation. So why, of both. Are, why is runes in ord? Uh, mostly because it was, it was easiest that way. It would have just been a massive pain in my ass to create like a whole new binary and a whole new website. There's um, a lot of boilerplate code, like talking to Bitcoin Core, getting yep. blogs. We have like a lot of optimized things for fetching blogs. Yep. It's just a lot of work. Also, I think, I mean, I think what the DGENs want is the DGENs want a sort of seamless, interoperable sandbox to plan. They want different things to do on Bitcoin and they don't want to have them all be different programs and different protocols and different universes, right? They don't want that fragmentation. So I think it's much better if runes and inscriptions are sort of maintained together and in the same software, and then they can they can interoperate in certain ways. Like for example, when you create a rune, you can also create an inscription, which becomes the sort of logo for the rune. And we can add in the future recursive endpoints so that inscriptions can access the rune balance of an address or of, you know, the same output that the inscription is on to do, you know, one thing or another. Yeah, I guess. Raf was Raf was very nervous about yeah. the entangling of uh, runes I mean, also, and like, you know, from a technical perspective, like a lot of the code is just the same. Right? Yeah. You need to index the blockchain. Otherwise, mm -hmm. you know. It's hard. Yep. Maybe the R in Ord stands for runes. That's right. <laughs> Ordinals and runes demon. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah exactly. Yeah, yeah. Ordinals and, oh, damn, that's good. There you go. I think we'll probably make it possible to only index runes. Yeah. Uh, it, at some point. Does that not work? Like We have a flag like no index inscriptions, but uh -huh. it doesn't work. What it's, happens when you don't index inscriptions? Uh, it just doesn't fetch the transactions and just doesn't really work. Really? Like, like it gets oh, like an error. It's right, like, it's because, total bullshit. Like, because there's no, it doesn't fetch the it transactions. It doesn't populate our, like, yeah. cache, our three level cache right. to fetch. Um, so, yeah, that's broken. No, no, no. I think, it's, I think it's that the blocks are empty. Because when you do, <laughs> um, that, yeah. before the first inscription height, <laughs> You uh, you don't fetch any. We've we've never used that flag, so we don't know. If we, we should like, really just remove it. We should it. just remove it yeah. and then have like only index runes, and then the indexing is pretty quick. Like indexing yeah. runes is like it just looks at op returns. Yep. Um, yeah. So yeah, we'll we'll add. It doesn't that do any of this like the sad. So you don't if you don't care about inscriptions, you don't have to use it. Yeah. Yeah. But this is where I think it gets into the nuances of the Venn diagram intersections, right? Mm -hmm. Where it's like you control the GitHub, yeah. and so you can just put runes in there. That's right, yeah. And we're that's like, right. well, we're not paying for it out of OOI. But yeah. That's the best. We I didn't can want do. OOI to pay for it. <laughs> no, to be you clear, didn't, you didn't. But <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but we made that distinction. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, and and it's possible that at some point in the future, I don't know. I mean, like, would we ever want to fund runes using OOI money? I, I don't think there's this like really a pressing need for that. We could eventually make like a separate donation address for people just funding funding runes development. I think the important thing is that we're clear with the mandate, right? So yeah. if we like extend the scope of OI to include runes, then that would be fine. But I think the the, the point so far was like we have collected donations for building inscriptions yeah. and art so we didn't want to use that money for for something else mm. i think that you yeah. know that's kind of the transparency i would uh, yeah. you know i, I want to see in that so yeah i think i definitely agree with that but then i feel like on a personal level it's more like okay if i look at ordinals it's like i can pretty much vouch for and stand behind everything that's been mm -hmm. an outcome of ordinals and inscriptions i mean not literally every inscription or everything that anyone's done with ordinals but in terms of the way that it affects Bitcoin and how it plays out, I feel pretty comfortable with it and I like it and I think it's good mm -hmm. for Bitcoin. I feel like runes is this like weird question mark where I'm like, this might be a demon. I don't know. Yeah. I mean, how do you feel about it? Because I feel like before ordinals took off, you had a very specific idea of game. You game theoried out everything, basically. Yeah. Not to say things happened that you I predicted it all. You kind of, to be honest. <laughs> like you did honestly predict yeah, like most things. I mean, obviously, there's there's ways people have used it, like BRC twenty, yeah, for BRC example. 20. That you the big could, the big one predict. that I didn't predict was um, mempool sniping of um, uh, PSPT mm, yeah. atomic swaps. That's a yeah. really interesting one. That's pretty big that I didn't predict at all. Yeah, and BRC twenty and BRC twenty. Yeah, 
but uh, yeah, so I mean, there's stuff that you didn't predict, but generally speaking, in terms of like, okay, the fee market is going to do this. And mm-hmm. like, you know, I don't know. There was a lot that I think played out pretty much exactly as you thought it would. I don't think you have that same scheme for runes. Like, yeah. do you, you know? I mean, as far as what happens with, with the fee market, yeah. I mean, like, I think fees go up, right. right? But that's also pretty easy to predict because we've seen exactly the same thing with BRC20. So it's, you know, clear that we'll have sort of a repeat of that. As far as the ultimate success of failure or runes of runes, I really don't know. You Not know? even success and failure, but more like kind of... Oh, no, but I mean, like, you know, how it's adopted, what kind of runes people make, what kind of runes are popular, what the distribution is between different rune different you know runes like how much market share they take i have no idea yeah so i feel less like (laughs) like i feel like ordinals i'm like yeah you know we we should really build out the tools to make that (laughs) happen with runes i'm like i don't know (laughs) but you know you have to you have you're an artist i have to unleash my demons yeah Yeah. yeah, it's like there's there's you have no choice in the matter like this is who you are i think runes could really be a flop like could completely just be a flop i think that inscriptions are really kind of a slam dunk, right? Like NFTs, you want NFTs on the most permanent, highest status chain, right? And having this uh, simplicity to inscriptions in terms of they're all the same and all the art, all the content is on chain. I think that makes a lot of sense. With rune, with 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 tokens, I think that people are much much more mercenary. Like, for example, take stable coins. The chain doing the highest stable coin volume is Tron. Tether on Tron is the king of uh, stable coins. And so I think that that means that it indicates that people don't have a strong preference there for, um, you know, the chain being high quality, the chain being secure, the chain being decentralized. And then features wise, realistically, I think runes, you know, has about the same features as BRC 20. It has longer ticker names, which I actually think is really nice. It's much more expressive, but it has BRC 20s open mint mechanic. Um, it's not that different from other token protocols. It, it doesn't have this very distinguishing advantage, like all content being on chain. Um, so yeah, no, I think that's that's true in the sense that like it's kind of intuitive why, as you said, you would want inscriptions over NFTs. Yeah. What is the reason to want runes over like a Solana meme coin? Right. Does Does anybody talk about like the longevity of their Solana meme coin? Does anybody right. care that Dog with Hat like outlives them? Right. Like. It's it's I think that's a much weaker value proposition for it's very Bitcoin. ephemeral. Yeah, very ephemeral. You want to yeah. pump your bags. You want to get out. You want to go in and out quickly. Yeah. You want like a lot of liquidity and like, in and out quickly. A lot of yeah. liquidity. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. <laughs> uh, but yeah, like you like to, I, I imagine that like these uh, tokens are much more, more likely to eventually sort of die completely like individual tokens that just nobody cares about, you know, yeah. like weird tokens from the 2017 ICO bubble. Like, are those around, you know, because there, there is no with NFTs, there is a lot of premium on older collections. Mm-hmm. Older collections are inherently valued at, as being more scarce. They're sort of these old artifacts with tokens. I don't think that's the case. Nobody is going to like Potcoin and being like, oh, look, Potcoin was a 2014 ICO altcoin. Like, this is a grail. You have to own Potcoin. <laughs> Nobody says that. Nobody's ever said that before this Ghost moment. No, yeah, Dogecoin is like maybe the one sort of example, but like it, the past is yeah. a, a graveyard. But I would say Dogecoin had a revival because I think meme coins yeah. are the meta. Yeah, meme coins you are the meta. You know what I mean? Like yeah. Dogecoin was kind of the original meme coin. Yeah. And I think like Dog with Hat is just like a new version yeah. of Doge. It's the Doge yeah. meme coin. You know? I, I have things to say to the DGENs about rune names. Oh, no. Okay. They better be fucking good. Yeah. What I've seen before of the DGEN's runes name names have not been good, okay? I have not seen a single decent idea for a rune name. I'm not even joking. Not one. Literally not one. But the real alpha is if you have a good name, why would you put it anywhere? Uh, this is this is kind of true, but I see a lot of terrible ideas, right? So It's like the people- mid-curve. You know what I mean? Like it's like it's the, like the dark forest. You the, don't want to reveal the, the, yourself. The, yeah. the, the, the high curve people, they are uh, uh, you know keeping it secret. The low the low curve people are illiterate and they can't use Twitter. Yeah. Yeah. No, I mean I would believe they that they can't think thirteen characters or longer. I would believe that if I had seen <laughs> some names that people were talking about on Twitter that were good. Right. You would suspect that like okay, people are sharing some ideas for names. Right. They clearly don't but care for about. For example, them or not. like like 
runestone like leonidas's project like that's gonna have a name but they're not saying it right they just stole the name from your thing to be honest you yeah know? I, I think leonidas like, asked me like oh hey do you think this would be confusing and i was like I'm a dev, not a cop, you know? <laughs> yeah, maybe, I'm just maybe, saying, maybe I should have said no. It's I'm just too confusing. saying what he's calling it now is not going to be the name because it's not 13 it characters the, yeah, or yeah, longer, yeah. right? So, and he's not going to say what he wants it to be because he wants to get it. True, yeah. So I think like it's just really there's there's lots of people that I think want to do things, but they don't want to give it away. I, I have no confidence that the things that, that people are keeping secret are any better than the things that they are suggesting on Twitter. So I just yeah, want... Yeah, that could be totally true. I just want to... In, to imp- a pas- passionate plea to people please think of good names don't think of cringe bullshit okay don't do like rune something like do, think of like a new idea okay i posted a list on twitter of like just random things that i thought up over the top of my head that i think are just and none of them are cringe at all right? none of them are cringe at all <laughs> <laughs> um, the best one is the piss piss fetishist doubloons People um, love that. The PFD. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So just like, just think of something creative. Think of something funny. Pick a good emoji. Like pick a good emoji for the currency symbol. Um, you can use spacers in your names, which are bullets, which uh, don't contribute to like... The you can also just use name. periods. It's just... Oh, yeah. In the UI, you can use yeah. periods, but everything displays as uh, as bullet spacers. So yeah, just like guys, like try try a little bit this harder. This is all he okay? cares about. I just want the aesthetics to be decent, you know? Yeah. yeah. Have you thought more about um whether or not you're in a hard code the first 10 i feel like you change your mind every five minutes i do i go back and forth about it and a big part of the desire to hold hardcore hard code more, more than one is because the dgens seem to be so bad at coming up with names like if i don't like runes one through nine are just going to be so stupid like just so stupid i just i don't know i've tried to think through like the having block of it all and then just like the having block of it all yeah like just you know <laughs> is that a is that an idiom that i'm not aware of i've i'm trying to think through the blank of it all uh-huh. like that's what i'm saying yeah. just i'm trying to think through the having block of it all uh-huh. in the sense that like there's the epic stat mm-hmm. there's the first runes yep like if you are a mining pool who gets that block what do you do? Like, do you, are they, I, I feel like they're not thinking of good rune names, I doubt but it. are they thinking of runes at all? Or are know. they just going to let whatever the highest fee is go through? Or mm-hmm. do they have like some bribe deal with someone? Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like yeah. I, I really, but this is where I'm saying like, I feel like with ordinals and inscriptions, like, okay, the epic stat, okay. Like maybe people will want to reorg to get the epic stat, but that's pretty straightforward. Mm-hmm. Right. And I can pretty much stand by that. I'm like, okay, maybe there's like a reorg for like a block or two, like mm-hmm. big whoop, whatever fees yep. are high. Okay. I feel like with runes, that's where I start to get like, Oh geez, what the fuck are they going to get into yep. to get those names? Yep. You know, I actually think there's not going to be any hijinks. People have talked a lot about reorgs and stuff on the having my personal prediction is no reorgs. Uh, I just don't think that anybody's really motivated enough. I think that the technical complexity is high. If you look at the game theory, you're actually better off like trying to bribe people to accept your blocks if you mine them than you are trying to reorg their blocks. And I don't think we've ever seen a actual attempt at a reorg ever. Um, mm. And there's there are incentives for reorgs, right? The 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 natural incentive for a reorg aside from runes is to just try to double spend somebody to try to send somebody a payment, get them to accept it and then double spend that payment by reorging out that block that you sent them the payment into. Sure. So every time you have, you're making $1 million payment. If you can find somebody who will accept it on one confirmation, that is an incentive to reorg the chain. And I believe we've never seen not once a actual attempt at, at reorging the chain. But if there's like one block, that's all of a sudden 10 times the value of all preceding and all, blocks after that mm-hmm. doesn't that like incentivize but uh but a uh a, like it's this gold nugget you no but, all, uh, but like you can find if no. you can get that gold nugget but a large transaction has some has sort of the same effect if if you you can but ma- everyone is getting the trend like it's like it, it's not just one person saying hey we're gonna mm. do this and like we're gonna reorg here so that this does this it's every single person can see the gold nugget and wants uh-huh. the gold nugget but which my, is different right uh not necessarily because my my point is that okay bitcoin's been going for 10 years over the course of those you know 10 plus years geez i guess like 15 14 15 years 15 yeah 15 years at this point um there have been many 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 high 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 value transactions all the time. And those those transactions, the value of those transactions dwarfs the size of the fees that those blocks were mined in, right? And so if somebody making one of those transactions could 
uh, get somebody to accept payment for it with a low number of confirmations, that would be a very, very high incentive to reorg the chain. And yeah, it is true. This is a more visible opportunity to yeah, do that's so. that's more what I mean. But there have been a lot of implied background uh, opportunities to do this, incentives to do this, and we still haven't seen it. So it seems unlikely to me that it, it, this one seems it's, it's, it's top of everybody's mind because it's much, much more salient. It's much more visible, but the invisible uh, incentives to do so have existed forever. Fair. Should we bet on it? <laughs> yeah, I'll bet. I'll, I'll bet you. Po- to- I'll bet you point oh one Bitcoin that there <laughs> won't be any. Bet- yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I don't know. This is, again, this is where I just think I'm like I really don't know. I really. I'll take no... the bet. Yeah. Point, You're gonna bet? Point oh one Bitcoin. Point oh one. All right, let's there do it. Go. No, no reorgs. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> Damn. Yep. We're just gonna fleece him dry. <laughs> <laughs> Um, okay, I mean, runes talk. It's everything derails into runes talk these days. Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah. What do you think about runes? <laughs> <sighs> um, <laughs> I mean, I, you know, I, I think it's a little. I, I think I think it's a little bit like like what you said. Like with inscriptions, I see, I really see the use case. Right, mm-hmm. it's a use case that that resonates with me of of having you know like an. Uh, you know, a storage medium, a canvas that that is really long lasting and, mm-hmm. and so on. With runes, like I liked, like I was really, really, really displeased when BSC twenties took over inscriptions. Yeah, and you know, because it's just from a purely technical perspective, it's like a very kind of wasteful and and inefficient protocol. Um, so as an engineer, you look at that and think, well, that could you know you could do it a lot better and a lot more efficiently and in a lot more kind of bitcoin native way Mm -hmm. and i think and that's what i like about runes is that it you know runes achieves that right it's like it's a very simple elegant protocol that that kind of takes the essence of what's in you know something like bsc20 and and does it you know i think i think in a very elegant way so from a technical perspective i'm i'm really like um you know i really like it from a use case perspective i'm kind of you know i you know i think describing it as a casino i think is fair i think that's you know that's that's good i you know i think there will be a lot of stuff going on there that is probably going to be a little sketchy unsavory <laughs> unsavory let's yeah. say. Some could say so so that's you know that's kind of what what makes me a little skeptical but but if i just look at it from a technical perspective and i'm really curious about it as an experiment right mm. this in, in terms of launching this this is so different from ordinals right mm. where no one was expecting that to be like you know like a breakout success yeah with runes like you know everybody's expecting that to be like a multi-billion dollar kind of overnight success yeah. that everybody is now preparing for um and and you know kind of the history of technology shows that that's not necessarily the best condition for success yeah. so it's going to be a very interesting experiment in terms of adoption and and you know how how you know how will it actually be um you know how will that actually play out? I don't know, yeah. um, but I like you know I like I like the protocol. It's uh, it's it's elegant and uh, and and you know very efficient and very Bitcoiny. So yeah. I think a That's couple nice. of weeks out, I'll just start flooding. <laughs> be like, who are these fucking devs that wrote this? Like, look at these bugs over here. Like, it's total shit. Uh, <laughs> it's probably the best recipe for success. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Okay, yeah. I'm gonna, gonna make a yeah. fud, fud, fud thread. Yeah. 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 yeah, I think probably like aside from all the casino stuff. Maybe if it's good if Bitcoin just has a fungible token protocol kind of yeah. in the back pocket that, okay, if, you know, if some way of doing stable coins that's really good on Bitcoin, some some interesting use case happens, there is the tokens that you can take advantage of it. But yeah, yeah. I agreed. And it could I mean, just I, be a massive flaw. I, I, yeah, agreed. <laughs> I mean, I think, you know, that's also what I'm thinking. I think it's better to have it on Bitcoin mm-hmm. in a in a way that is like a technically solid yeah. implementation than not having it or just having it on Tron or Solana. Yeah. So I think that's that's good. And I think, you know, kind of I'm also thinking maybe there is some interesting use cases that you could explore or whatever. Mm-hmm. Like if people want to like tokenize expensive script inscriptions maybe that's a you know maybe that's a use case that's mm-hmm. that's interesting or whatever but yeah. um you know um yeah i'm i think like you said it's not like the you know it's not like something where i think yeah this is this is like a really clear really kind of like 
long lasting use case for something but it's more like yeah this is a good implementation if you think that you need a solution for this problem and that's mm -hmm. kind of more yeah. you know okay yeah if you want to build a casino but then you need to build the casino on bitcoin yeah um, you know it's maybe yeah. like you said right no one is going to care for the long lasting aspects of your rune that you yeah. want to speculate on for a yeah. few months right it's so you know that's kind of where i have my question marks yeah Yeah, I mean, you know, Casey is possessed by some sort of spirit in the other world and he needs to make manifest these things. So none of us can pretend to understand the will of these things that exist beyond That's our realm. very well said. Yeah, so, you know, you just go with it. It's got a vibe. <laughs> you just got to give him the freedom to, to do it, you know. Yeah. Don't make him need to make money or, yeah. you know, run a business or yeah. anything like yeah, that. Yeah, 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 yeah. Just let him make runes. Yeah, and at this point, I'm totally mentally checked out from runes already. Yeah, he's uh, already on his next bullshit. The protocol is is finished. It's all good. We launched it in a word. It's going to do its thing. I don't think we really have any features that we want to add. Not before launch. Not After before launch, launch. We have some things planned. The only thing that we have an idea for is gambling, where you can just straight up gamble your rooms mm -hmm. on the blockchain. But not for V1. Just fucking roll the dice. It's just the, like it's the best casino. There's no house you. edge. It's only transaction fees. Transaction yeah, yeah. fees are not relative. They're yeah. absolute yeah. to the amount you bet. Yeah. So it's, yeah. it's a pretty good casino. It's a great casino. Yeah. Like you can't get it any better anywhere else. Yeah. Um, yeah. So now I'm working on a peer to peer very early stages <laughs> working on a peer-to-peer -peer file sharing network which is no blockchain no crypto no token whatsoever it's basically like BitTorrent, but with a like a user interface that makes it very easy to use but still fundamentally the technology is exactly the same as BitTorrent underneath he just wants to go to prison for the rest of his life and he's mm. just continuing down the list of projects until finally one gets him there well you know this one uh i'm much <laughs> much more worried about legal problems than i am with ordinals and inscriptions because you know copyright holders are absolutely vicious they love to prosecute everybody and as, as far as i know what i'm going to be doing is going to be totally legal you know i'm writing software as far as i know the developer of a BitTorrent client has never gone to jail um, and as long as the model of the software is the same as BitTorrent, I probably won't go to jail. But it really, you know, makes you think that, like, you should really be much more afraid of Disney than you should be afraid of the U.S. government. A hundred percent. Yeah, because the U.S. government. That's the capitalist dream, no? Getting, no, put in the, put, getting put in the Disney gulag. As long as it's privately owned. <laughs> yeah, as long as it's privately owned. <laughs> then the That's capitalists right. love it. Yeah. <laughs> So um, yeah. Should we end it there? Is there anything else we should talk about? I don't know how long we've been going, actually. We've been going for mm, 58 minutes. Oh, okay, great. Yep. Um, what else should we say? I mean, we're mm. we've got an event tonight. We will be dressed in these outfits for that event. So. I will not be dressed in these outfits. I'm going home. I'm changing. This is how you're going to break the news to me here on the Home Money Podcast? Yeah, that's right. Bro, Sorry. You fucked my life. Um, you look really good in the suit. No, you look terrible. good. What are you talking about? Uh, I look like a retard. He wants to wear... He looks like George Clooney. <laughs> yeah, he wants to wear the same gray hoodie that he's worn for the last five days straight. Exactly. That's when I feel comfortable. <laughs> um, but yeah, we have an event tonight. Um, I don't know. We've got events all year. I mean, that's that's part of what we're doing. Uh, bringing the culture to Bitcoin. I mean, it's been so fun to see. I mean, not just our events, but so many other people are doing events. And there's such a different culture mm -hmm. than Bitcoin events before ordinals it's insane yep. yeah it's yeah there's there's girls around there's girls like that, we got hers know? it's yep. crazy um but yeah i mean you know <laughs> runes launch we'll see how it fucking goes <laughs> i stand by nothing um yeah anything else i think we're good all right okay. love yeah. you guys see you guys <laughs> see you enjoy guys. the having. bye